President, I'm Dr. Gabriel Susu, I'm Benue Northeast. Uh, Mr. President, let me first commend the chairman uh, for the comprehensive presentation, and laying the issue bare as they are. Mr. President, I will comment on three main items here. First will be uh, the deficit, uh, the subsidy. Uh, Mr. President, the demonstrative debt uh, as presented here. Mr. President, in the main budget, issues of deficit were raised on the floor of the Senate here. And the worry and the concern was the financing item. From the presentation of the chairman here, which is what was presented to him from finance, what we have here is that it will be financed from the capital market. Mr. President, as far as I'm concerned, as far as we know, this does not exist. Mr. President, when you have a deficit as high as seven point something trillion, with a threshold of 3.99, which is totally and absolutely above uh, the threshold as presented by the Fiscal Responsibility Act, it means that the budget of initial cannot be implemented. We cannot have a budget with this kind of deficit, and then the financing items are so fluid. There's nothing specific, it's very fluid. Capital market, how? What we had presented before was that this will be financed from the sale of government assets. Now it is capital market. It is not stated. That is a fluid statement. We are dealing with a serious situation, and we must be serious about it. So, Mr. President, this deficit and based on the threshold of 3.99, Mr. President, it will be very difficult to finance the deficit. And once you don't do it, which then means that the deficit we have here presented on paper here will be about 10 trillion. That is what it means. Because once you are unable to assess the financing item for a deficit, there's an increment in the deficit. So the deficit that we have is about 10 trillion. It's not seven, Mr. President, based on what is presented here. I'll go to the next one, Mr. President, which is the issue of the subsidy. When we invited the group managing director of NMPC to appear before the two committees of upstream and downstream, what he presented to us, as stated here by uh, the other previous speakers, Mr. President was very scary. And so when you have that kind of situation, and now you say that you are increasing the subsidy, yes, we all agree that there was a need for the president to consider stalling on the issue of subsidy. But the statistics, what is the statistics that this uh, subsidy will be increased from three point something to four trillion? Subsidy. And then we don't have the statistics. This is something that I had expected that would be stated here clearly. Mr. President, the other issue which I have raised here consistently is the issue of tax expenditure. If we look at the tax expenditure, Mr. President, it's about 2.4 trillion. Those tax expenditures are tax deferrals and exemption given to certain companies and individuals. Mr. President, we need to know who are the beneficiaries. Otherwise, why don't we reduce the tax expenditure to something about 1 trillion or even in the billions? Let us know who are the people benefiting from this tax expenditure. If we have tax expenditure as high as two point something billion, trillion, and then we are looking for money to finance deficit, Mr. President, there is an absolute need for us to consider and look seriously at the beneficiaries of this tax expenditure. Because these are ways where people are taking money, embezzling money without us actually knowing, and we are just being bamboozled into passing something that. Uh, uh, we, we do not know. Uh, finally, Mr. President, the domestic debt service, I have also argued here before. Mr. President, domestic debt service, with the in increment in, in this, what it does is that 
it depletes completely the economy of the country because it crowds out private sector borrowing. It crowds out completely private sector borrowing, Mr. President. We cannot continue to increase the domestic debt service when we know that this is money where they engage in quanti quantitative easing. Basically, what that means is that they're printing money. And that is why our Naira is fluctuating like a yo-yo. There is no way it can be stabilized when all that you do is to print money to service debt. And then people who all night would have borrowed money uh, to change and increase employment in the economy are being crowded out because all of this is going to the capital market, like he said. If the government is going to capital market, how, what would the private sector do? Who will increase uh, uh, employment and enhance uh, the economy of our country? So, Mr. President, we needed to have had this document at least a day to look at it. Unfortunately, we are just seeing it now. But most of the items, the parameters set here, Mr. President, shows clearly that we have a big problem. And I want to agree totally with the leader of the Senate. Mr. President, the problem should be such that as a Senate who represent the people, we should have an opportunity to look at this properly before passing it. Because we're passing something that will impact negatively on, our, on the people that we represent. And we're saying that we represent hopes, fears, and aspirations of those people. And then we'll come and pass a, a revenue profile that will impact negatively on them. Mr. President, it does not make sense. And so my submission, Mr. President, is that we shouldn't rush in passing this, this report. There are issues here that are very fundamental that must be properly looked at for us to take a decision, Mr. President. I saw...